The streak continues as the Red Hot Flames make it four consecutive victories to start the season. Hey, everyone. Welcome into Burning Questions. Rob Wong joined alongside by Post Media Calgary Flames writers Wes Gilbertson and Danny Austin. And guys, the good vibes continuing around this Flames team right now. They've started the season 4-0 and for the first time in 15 years. The results are one thing, Wes, but when you look at the process for the Flames right now, are you liking what you're seeing? I think the biggest thing, and maybe, you know, maybe this fits under the heading of process, like the biggest thing you have to like about what you see from the Flames is the belief right now. Like they spent all of training camp telling us, you know what, you guys say whatever you want about us and how bad we're going to be. We, we think we're going we're gonna to be a lot better. We think we're going to surprise people. And, and so far, it's exactly what they've done. And, you know, I don't know exactly what to make out of a, a 4 and 0 start which equals the best start in franchise history I, I don't know if it ultimately means you know we're going to be talking in march or april about a shot at a surprise playoff berth but it's not it's not smoke and mirrors like yeah they pulled a rabbit out of the hat on opening night in in vancouver but they you know they've mostly won with kind of solid defensive play they don't give up a ton of chances they're getting scoring from throughout the lineup and they've made good on this idea that we're going to be a really hard team to play against. And so 78 games to go, I, I get it, but I, I don't see anything that you look at them and think <laughs> they couldn't do that again Saturday in Seattle. They, you know, they couldn't do that next week when they have a three game homestand, like what they're doing. And, and please don't mistake this as me saying they're going 82 and oh this season, but you know, what they're doing and that process you refer to, there, there's some ingredients there that I legitimately think they can maintain. Yeah, like, do you believe? Do you believe doesn't matter. They are 4-0. Like, they like they are undefeated after four games. It's real. Like, there's no, there are no, as Wes said, there's no smoke and mirrors here. So, for me, like, you are what your record says you are, and right now they're a pretty good hockey team. And, like, it's not, it hasn't been luck. And I will say that I was out and about sort of yesterday before, the game and people were more excited to be going to Calgary Flames hockey, yeah, uh, Calgary Flames hockey game than I have seen people in a really long time. You know, they wanted to talk to me about Dustin Wolf. Friends wanted to talk to me about Coronado, Hansa, Huberto, who we're going to get into. And honestly, like that for me is more important as you know, a sports reporter. It's it's seeing the excitement in the city and people should be excited because this team is like I don't know if they're great, but. I know that they're four and zero, so I'm kind of repeating the same thing over and over again. I just like, I people keep asking me, like, is it real? And I'm like, the record says it's real, so it's real. That's I, I think it's great. So you mentioned Jonathan Huberto, and he's a guy we've talked a lot about last season and even before this season about what the expectations were for him, Danny. But safe to say, he is exceeding them right now. What are you seeing from him at, at this moment with six points in the first four games? Yeah, I mean, he's exceeding the expectations we had for him in 2024. I don't think that in 2022, when they signed him for $10.5 million, this is exceeding those expectations at all. Um, I, I think he's looked better. I, I still, I'll be honest with you, I don't really see him taking over games. I, I think we saw a little bit in Game 2 and Saturday. I, I did think that he was sort of the best player on the ice at times, but I, I still think it's a work in progress, and I don't think he's necessarily, you know, an MVP candidate. But uh, I, I really like... What Anthony Mantha and Martin Pospisil, you know, how, how that line fits. I, I think that speed, that aggressiveness that Pospisil has has been has worked wonders. And I think Anthony Mantha, is, he's a lot better than I thought he was. Like, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I thought this guy was going to be bring him in, hope he brings out something good in Huberto and then trade him away. And I, I think that guy's, that guy's a player. At least through four games, he is really coming out and, and contributing. And, yeah, I mean – you want you need Jonathan Huberto to be your best player. That's why you're paying him ten and a half million dollars a year. I don't know that he's quite there, but I think he's been a lot better so far than sort of any stretch that I've ever seen him uh, play in Calgary. Six points so far puts Huberto tied for the team lead with with Rasmus Anderson, and I, I think probably more pertinent pertinent in Huberto's case is that six points. It took him eleven games to get there last season. It took him eleven games to get there the season before, uh, and so here he is in in four games and what I think Ryan Huska, the Flames head coach has sort of unlocked two things. One, um, you know, being the line combination, there's some chemistry there with, with Anthony Manta. I think more than anything, having Martin Pospisil as a center has both of those guys skating a little bit more than they um, maybe have it in years past. I think, 
you know, when Jonathan Huberto didn't have much of an impact on games, he just wasn't moving his feet. He was trying to make a bunch of fancy passes from a stationary position. And, and that's hard to do in the NHL uh, in, you know, 2024 or 2023 or whatever year we happen to be talking about. So I, I think the speed of Pospisil has sort of unlocked something so far in, in Huberto. And I think the other thing um, is just the fact that he's being used regularly on the the penalty kill. Like we're not talking about a guy who's going to get a ton of shorthanded points. He's not going to pad his offensive totals while penalty killing, but he's talked about sort of what it means to have that trust from the coaching staff and what it does to keep him involved in the game. You know, there's an extra maybe two minutes a night that he would have been watching from the bench uh, that he's on the ice and, and he feels like a part of it. And maybe he's not measuring himself just based on the point totals. And, you know, I think that's helped so far. You know, it's another one of those, like, we'll repeat the same thing. It's only four games, you know, 78 to go. But, you know, the early returns on, on Huberto are certainly the best of what we've seen in his three seasons with the Flames. For sure. And the confidence uh, seems to be pretty big right now with uh, not only him, but a lot of the youngsters as well, Wes. And you've got Connor Zaria with five points. Martin Pospisil, who you mentioned, five points as well. Matt Coronado with a couple of goals against Chicago. And of course, Dustin Wolf's play in net. Which youngster has stood out to you the most so far in these first four games? You know, I'm really glad you asked me this question first because there, there's only one answer for me and no uh, disrespect to Zary's great overtime goal or, or the way Pospisil's impacted that line. But Dustin Wolf has, from my vantage point, been the most impressive youngster. I mean, last night against the Chicago Blackhawks, he, he was really in a groove. Like, he makes a great save on Connor Bedard 20-some seconds into the game. There was a stretch in the second period where the Flames looked really scrambly and he makes a couple of, of really important stops. Um, you know, Matt Coronado, who had a couple of goals last night, said afterward, yeah, we carried the momentum through that stretch because of those saves. Like we, we were having a bit of a, a fight for a few minutes there. We were fighting the puck and yet we have the momentum because of Dustin Wolf. And so two starts so far, both on home ice, 944 save percentage. Uh, as someone pointed out to me last night, if you go back to last season, that's six consecutive wins, six straight starts for him. So um, a lot to like from the the 23-year-old goalie. Yeah, I'm not thrilled that I got the second answer here because Wes is right. It's Dustin Danny, you're wrong. <laughs> Whatever you say, you're wrong. <laughs> I know. Uh, the answer is Dustin Wolf, and honestly, man, like, is he ever fun to watch? Like, this is, you know, we saw him a little bit in the NHL. He is so fast. And he is so sharp. Like, he's just incredible to watch. I will. I mean, I also don't think that there is a wrong answer here. I think Connor Zary has been, you know, you you have to worry about the sophomore slump because there's, you know, a history of it happening with so many players, and I, I think he's looked great. We've mentioned Martin Pospisil uh, a couple times. Um, what a player he is turning turning out to be. We're still sort of waiting on that Sam Honzek sort of, you know, offensive explosion, but he hasn't looked out of place. Like, he's you, you don't watch that guy and say, oh, send him down to the Wranglers right now. And then obviously Coronado's two goals yesterday, I mean, you know, and, and Kevin Ball's not even that old. We can include him in one of the young guys, and I've been very impressed with the way he's playing. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's I, I there's only one right answer, but I don't know that there's any wrong answers because I, I do think that the way that the youth is contributing has been a big part of the story this year. It It's a really good way to put it because if they didn't have Dustin Wolf, you wouldn't say, hey, we're not, you know, we're not getting enough from our young guys. You could easily make Connor Zary the answer to that question. You could you know, easily talk about Kevin Ball, as you said, and the sort of tower of power he's been on on what's looking like the Flames' top pairing. But as Danny agreed, the answer is Dustin Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of like uh, with the Flames right now. Winners of four in a row. We'll see if they can keep it going on Saturday in Seattle. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. For Wes Gilbertson and Danny Austin, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.